<laughs> Look, don't peek. Ouch. That slap is exactly what I think the PlayStation 4 homebrew scene needs. Let's talk about it. So I'm going to be the YouTuber that tells you things exactly as they should be. And the very first thing that I want to tell you is, is that the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 homebrew scene owes you absolutely nothing. Let that sink in just for a moment. And the reason that I'm telling you that isn't to be disrespectful or to be mean or be some like scary YouTuber that's on the internet. It's simply because I think a lot of people in this scene believes that they are automatically owed exploits when in reality they really aren't. So let's take a look at some of my notes that I have here today. And so with just about every release that at least I've encountered with Sony's software for the PlayStation, there's always this concept of people updating to the latest and then coming back around and then asking for an exploit for that firmware. So again, we've had this happen multiple times on 9.03 and 9.04, which I actually believe is excusable, at least at this point in time on March the 24th, mainly because those firmwares, or at least with 9.03, has been out for a couple of months and understand, you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend, or your kid or whatever could have accidentally updated your system to 9.04 and 9.03. Now, what I'm finding a little bit harder to believe is the 9.04. 5.0, which again came out as of yesterday, and people asking for an exploit for that already. I stated in here that I've had multiple DMs from people that's already been asking me about 9.50 jailbreaks or exploits because they accidentally updated. Sure, we can kind of dismiss those type of things happening because obviously the person updated the console more than likely manually. At least as of my knowledge right now, it isn't something that's showing up in the system updates if you don't actually go into it because of all of the major bugs that happened as the result of 9.50, including people that weren't able to connect to Call of Duty, as well as being prompted yet again to buy a PSN membership, even though they already had a PSN membership. And my complaint here isn't primarily just with people that updated to 9.50 or 9.03 or 9.04, but it's primarily with the lack of respect of the work that comes in to create an exploit that will even allow you to run these homebrew applications. And a lot more of this can be said again with PlayStation 5 with 4.50 and again 5.00 coming out yesterday. Again, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we do have a user Linux exploit for PS5 that's on 4.03. But again, I'm hearing people coming already out of the woodwork saying, hey, I updated to 5.00. Is there any sort of exploit for that? So I wanted to take a quick pivot here and talk a little bit about just the hacking scene that's in general. Again, I put these notes here just in case you want to read ahead, or maybe you don't even want to listen to me talk about this. I'll also put these notes in the description below. So as stated right here, I have been around for an absolute number of years, all the way from some of the early PlayStation 1 mods to the very complicated PlayStation 2 mod chips, back when I actually had hands that didn't shake and I was actually fairly decent at soldering. Again, with the GameCube, I've showed some of this off with my live stream with the Cube mod chip, as well as many things that dealt with the Nintendo Wii, the Wii U, the Xbox 360. And so why am I mentioning my past experiences with these type of consoles? I've always really enjoyed learning about the different types of methods that all of these different authors and developers and testers have worked on in order to hack consoles. I consider myself very lucky to be a part of the console scene because I get to leverage the work of others for really free. Which brings me to a recent video that I did which was on the PlayStation Vita. I posted on my YouTube community page that I got this blue PlayStation Vita. I had never owned a Vita before, 
But when I got it, obviously I knew that I could put homebrew on it. So what did I do? I got the Vita, I brought it home, and then within about 10 minutes, I was able to have my first piece of homebrew running on that device. Now, I am very aware that it took thousands and thousands of hours of combined research amongst many, many, many smarter, more intelligent people than I am in order to produce that exploit and to produce these nice little installers that gives me all of my homebrew for completely free. I didn't pay one single dime to hack my PlayStation Vita. Was I owed that by the scene? Absolutely not. The only thing that I was owed when I bought that PlayStation Vita was to run the software that Sony had designed and designated to run on that device. Should I be able to run Quake on my PlayStation Vita? Absolutely not. But that's the beauty and that's the power of homebrew and especially the homebrew community. And the bottom line that I'd like to kind of provide here is, is that I've always, with all of these consoles mentioned, I've taken advantage upon just the work of others. And so I remember when I got the Wii Mini. So with the Wii Mini, it didn't have things such as like an SD card slot. It also didn't have things like built-in Wi-Fi. But what I really appreciated about that was that even though all of the known methods of defeating the security on the Wii wouldn't work, people still came together in the homebrew community to find an exploit through the Bluetooth, the Bluetooth stack. So the controller and how it communicates with the Wii, there was an exploit found in that. That's the power and that's the goodness of the homebrew community. Not only did it allow others to start using that console for homebrew, but it was also a sense of togetherness, a sense that we're working on this together. And again, homebrew does not equal piracy. I know many, many, many people use homebrew in these exploits solely for the purpose of piracy. That's not the point and you don't get it. Homebrew is all about running the applications and the software that you want to explore your different types of ideas and creativity in an unrestricted manner. It's so often confused as just a way to pirate games. I posted on my YouTube community page again some of the titles that I had for PlayStation 3. And in that photo, I think there was probably about 50 or 60 PlayStation 3 games. I have a gigantic library of PlayStation 3 games that I've purchased after there was custom firmware, even for the PlayStation 3. Now, you might look at me and you may think, oh, okay, well, you're just an idiot then. You could have gotten all those games for free. And I would agree if I just wanted the games just to play once, delete, and then move on to the next one. But I really like things such as like the art books that comes with it. I love the manuals that come with it. I love owning the physical disc itself in order to play on any of my systems, regardless if they're jailbroken or not, or if I bring to a friend's house. This also leads me to this next section, which is the PlayStation 4 is in an odd spot. So Sony did not open up their platform like Microsoft did with the Xbox dev mode. So there is a developer mode that you can pay for for Xbox and you will be able to run homebrew applications. So if you go out and purchase a brand new Xbox Series X and you pay for the developer mode, then you can run Retro Arch for about 20 bucks once you pay that one-time membership fee forever. You may have to keep re-signing it, but you have the ability to write any homebrew and run it on your Xbox device. Sony didn't want to do this, and they haven't done this. Typically leads to this point, which is this increases a desire to hack it from the community standpoint. So the Xbox Series X and really the Xbox in general does not have a way to run homebrew outside of dev mode. Sony, on the other hand, at least up to PlayStation 4 9.00, all consoles can run homebrew through different types of exploits that have been known throughout the years. But what's very interesting now is, is that hackers are motivated 
by Sony's willingness to pay now. And I'm not saying all hackers ha are motivated simply with the ability for them to pay for it, but I believe that's definitely a factor that now we have to start thinking about. If Sony is willing to give X number of dollars to a hacker to disclose their findings before disclosing it to the public, then it may decrease their ability to tell the homebrew community of an exploit that they found. The other thing that I've mentioned to several folks on Twitter, especially CTURT, which right now has several disclosures that have just been paid out by Sony, is, is that CTURT and others are paid absolutely peanuts by Sony to disclose their hacks and their exploits that they found. The prices on these things range from about $500 and $10,000. Now, you may be thinking $500 or $10,000 is a lot of money. And that could be a fair statement depending on what your financial situation is. But again, in the grand scheme of things, and especially some expertise that I have from previous roles, it's still absolute peanuts compared to what Sony should be paying their hacking community. But again, that ties into the point to where would you take $10,000 or would you disclose it for free? And this is where really there's no reason now to really give it away for free, especially when you can get something out of it, even if it's $500. That makes sense to a lot of hackers. And I believe most of this comes into the point here. And so Sony is really getting away for cheap, mainly because I believe that the console hackers that do it, they either are doing it for fun it may be their kind of hobby in their off hours. Again, look at CTURT. He is a security engineer at Google. And so either they have absolutely no idea what their hack is worth or that they feel that the effort that they're putting into it is worth the money. And again, I have to keep coming back on this concept of Sony paying these hackers peanuts. And that's simply because, you know, if you look at any sort of marketing spin that's happening by Sony or any of these big companies, and especially this one right here, which was a treat code campaign where they put ads in NBA games and they built other types of ads that ran in social media to videos to other billboards and even more. Those campaigns and those ads cost a large number of money. And keep in mind what they just paid their hackers, $500 or $10,000 to disclose vulnerabilities, which could result in millions upon millions of dollars, especially if used for the wrong purpose, such as piracy. And so my final words on the matter is, is that simply you aren't owed anything. You aren't owed an exploit. You should be thankful to the people that actually went out and put forth the work in order to bring that exploit to you. If you want PS4 Homebrew today, then you need to buy a PlayStation 4 on 9.00. And there is so many opportunities and so many ways that you can still get a console on 9.00. I live in the United States. And so we have things such as Craigslist, we have things like OfferUp, we have pawn shops, we have auctions. I'm not going to speak for anywhere outside of the United States, but in the United States, there is a plethora of options for you to get a PS4 that's on 9.00. And if you come back with the argument of something such as, well, that cost money, well, it's all going to cost some sort of money in order to get a PlayStation 4. If you already have a PlayStation 4 that's on a very later version of the firmware, then you can always sell it and then try to recoup some of that cost for you to buy one that's on 9.00. And if you don't want to do that, well, then you can just wait and wait patiently. And my best advice right now for the PlayStation 5 homebrew is to buy a PlayStation 5 and then just put it inside of a closet, especially if you want homebrew. So again, the only hope right now that we have is that something materializes out of the 4.03 user land exploit. Nothing's promised, but I would surely get one before Sony starts shipping all PlayStation 5s with at least 4.50 or 5.00. And then lastly is that slap that I alluded to at the very beginning of this video. And that is that if none of these methods work for you, then just simply 
develop an exploit yourself. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!